Well, that came out easier than I thought. Curious if this is gonna come off just as easy. Almost forgot. Gotta get a bucket. <laughs> Gear oil's probably gonna leak out when I get these all off. And yes, you can use an impact with a non impact socket in this case because I've already broken everything free. The only thing I'm doing is using this to spin the, the bolts loose. That's it. Alright, pull this out. Ooh, that's on there, good. Looks like this is just a little different than a beetle. Got two more nuts up here, which beetles don't have. That's what it was. <laughs> hey, acting like I knew what I was doing. In fact, when it comes to buses, I'm quite green. All right, I got the top off. Uh, looks like the bottom one is also going through the slave cylinder down here, or wheel cylinder. Some people get upset when I call them master and slave. People nowadays, I'll tell you what. Wow, that's a long bolt. Jeez, I expected one about an inch long. <laughs> All right, and now the whole backing plate should pull out, and it does. The brake line is still attached, but it's in very, very bad shape. It's probably gonna snap off. In fact, it hasn't yet. I'm kind of surprised. There it goes. A little bit of fluid dripping out of there. Aim it towards the pan. There's our reduction box which uh, is very different than I expected it to be. I thought the uh, axle stuck out lower than the spring plate. I'm seeing that the uh, actual axle stub is coming out exactly the same height, but the axle from the transmission, the main axle goes, well, above. That's kind of interesting. Anyway, this is all going away. All of this is just going to leave us. Yeah, I'll be damned. Did not expect that to come out that easy. mounting bolts have not only been really tight but it was also impossible to get an impact back there but this is the last one 
Something's wrong with my ratchet. It's a craftsman. You know what that means. Yeah, damn ratchet's going back to Lowe's. That should be the last mounting bolt. And this should come out of the spring plate. Not sure how far back it's gonna go. Eh, it's out. Spring plate we're gonna keep. We're gonna modify this spring plate to mount to the beetle trailing arms. We've gotta do the same thing over on the other side. In case you're curious, this is my e-brake cable. I didn't have to disconnect it because it was just, yeah, dangling underneath the bus. This thing is just ruined, so this will get replaced, but that's why I didn't have to remove it. And the shock absorber, which was kind of stuck, I put a little bit of uh, lubricant on it, on the bolts, and just wiggled it, and all of a sudden it uh, came right out, quite to my surprise, so no worries on that. Wish I had that on video. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I am your host, the Duckman. <laughs> back today with my Volkswagen bus, also known as Gregory. And as you probably saw from the opening of this video, yeah, I'm starting to tear apart the rear suspension. Now that I've got the front braced, which you guys got to see if you're watching me up on Instagram. Well, that door opens nice and straight now, and it never has since I first got it. All that bracing in there seemed to do a pretty good job. I needed that extra strap because this front end had to go, well, diagonally that way. And... As a result, I have a door that opens and closes straight now, and this door never did that. Once I fixed this side, the driver's side got a little wonky, but I managed to straighten that out by putting a jack underneath that corner. That had to go straight up, not back, just straight up. And uh, with the braces that you see in there, here in the bottom, over on that side, they're ugly, but it holds everything nice and straight. I got everything braced up underneath here and things are pretty solid up front now. The doors now open and close smoothly like they're made of butter. And that's, yeah, it's, just, it's perfect. And I don't know why, but for some reason, instinctively, whenever I open a door, any door, whether it be on a Volkswagen or even one in my house, I always lift up on the, the doorknob a little bit. So just, I do that instinctively on here and I, I don't have to, and it actually pulls the door out of alignment. <laughs> so you just have to delicately open it and close it straight. And it works great with all the braces that I have on it. It's the same on both sides. I am just overjoyed with the way that turned out on the front here. What we're going to do today is uh, rip apart the rear. And the reason why I'm pulling the rear out is because, well, I'm getting rid of the reduction boxes and I'm getting rid of the swing axle suspension. We're upgrading it to an IRS and we're going to put a freeway flyer transmission into the back. This bus should drive more like a modern vehicle and be a little more competitive. I don't need all the excessive torque. Uh, that you get from the reduction boxes it's just yeah this thing's not going to be hauling huge loads that's not what i'm intending this bus to be but as always guys if you enjoy my videos licky likey comment subscribe plug that dingle belly that way you get updates every time that i upload a video check out duckshit.net for all my different social media links you can also find my merch up there today i'm wearing the reaper it was asked for by popular demand I, I never thought that the reaper would become part of my image but because i wear this in the shop it has become <laughs> but check out duckshit.net forward slash store you can also find the link up on the website so that way you can buy some duckman cycles merchandise or ski to the duck it's all there too you can also find my classified listings that's right and if you want to email me duckman cycles at duckshit.net let's go ahead and stay on this thing see if we can get some more done uh thank you guys for joining me today we'll be back right after the intro All right, well, here we are. I've got to get the jack out so I can put the jack in so I can jack the car up. And I better start finding my jack stands and quit jacking around, otherwise I'm just jacking myself off. All right, you guys are just going to f***ing love this. But we're in demolition mode right now, so we're going to eliminate things that we don't need. And that includes this brake line right here. I don't mess around with old brake lines. I put all new on. So, snippy snippy. I'm not going to be worried about trying to unbolt it or dealing with anything that's difficult or problematic to remove. So in the time that it takes to snip this, snip, I'll do the same on the other side. The clutch cable up here is also all rusty. 
There's no sense in trying to save that either. So we're also just going to snip it. And the brake line on the other side. Get right in there. Boy, it's tough to get in there with the camera. <laughs> there it is. All right, there's only one thing we need to detach after that. And you're looking at it, it's the wires to the starter. Remove all of them. I believe it's a uh, 13 millimeter wrench. I ought to get them off. So we'll get up underneath there and pull those next. shift coupler is up under here I'm not sure how well you can see it it's really tough for me to get a light under here but all I had to do is loosen one of the grub screws with my fingers because it wasn't even tight and then just push the shift rod away from the transmission and we come up over here to the nose cone mount and it's got four bolts on it and you only need to remove two to get the transmission out either the two outers or the two inners so we're gonna see which ones I can get the wrench on to best um, because I'm working under here and I really don't have a good place to prop the camera I'm not gonna record this but I think you guys get the drift. You've seen me do it before on the fastback. And I might even just put a sample of that clip right here for you guys to watch. All right, the last bit of fun we've got is to remove these big transmission mount nuts on the bottom. Well, actually, they're bolts. I got a nice impact socket for that, 27 millimeter. Should go on there just like so. I'm probably going to have to turn the ratchet on them to loosen them because impact usually just doesn't have enough force. No, I'll be damned. It's turning. Ha! I don't believe it. I do not believe it. It's not even hot. Usually when I turn these things, they come out and they're really, really hard to turn and yeah, hot. I don't know if this came out because a uh, previous owner before Mary didn't tighten them down correctly or what, but that came out real easy. Impact didn't even stress. I bet it'll probably be the same on this side. <laughs> yep, that's exactly right. Well, <laughs> You can't wish for something easier than that. I mean, that worked out great. I didn't even have to put any spray lube on it or anything. Not that it probably would have ever made it penetrated down that deep anyway, but okay. Throw them in our bin. This transmission's ready to come out. You probably see down below here, I've got a jack supporting it. That jack is just keeping the weight from uh, falling straight down. At this point, uh, from where the transmission sits, it's no longer being supported by the cradles. Up front, however, the mount is still sitting on the studs. So when I pull the transmission back, it's going to come off of that. Chances are this transmission is going to want to fall frontwards because uh, it's not properly balanced from where I'm at. So it's going to be a little nose heavy. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, move this camera back a bit so that way you guys can watch me uh, lugging and stressing. <laughs> All right, decided to GoPro that one because GoPro is an action camera and this right here is action. Come on, transmission. Straight back. I don't believe it. It actually balanced on the, uh, on the jack. <laughs> May wonders never cease. It's actually balanced on the jack. Despite being underneath the uh, the very very rear, I expected that thing to be nose heavy, and it's it's actually not. All right, let's go ahead and lower it down just a bit so we can get it around the uh, back side of the bus here. Yeah, we've cleared everything. There it is. One transmission out. Now we can get a good look up underneath the bus to see what kind of rust damage we've got. Well, would you look at that? It's not too bad. It's definitely scaly because it's got some surface rust, but I'm not seeing any like uh, significant holes or anything crazy. This doesn't look too bad back here. Now above the gas tank, however, above the engine compartment, you can see all the holes from the rust. 
Now the water had made its way down into the engine compartment and rusted out everything in the engine compartment. But forward of that, no, really, uh, really no problems to speak of. All right, good to go. Well, I've got to say that uh, that was a much easier process than I had uh, expected. In fact, easier than I even hoped for. Everything just uh, kind of unbolted. Bolts just turned. Nothing was really frozen up. Some stuff came out a little too easy. A little too easy, like somebody hadn't tightened it you know, previously as they should have. But uh, yeah, it all came apart. Uh, I think we're going to list this sucker up on the Samba and get this thing moved. I don't have a need for a reduction box transmission. Uh, as I had said, I'm going to upgrade this machine to uh, IRS and um, with a freeway flyer transmission to make it a much more drivable vehicle for modern roads. Again, not hauling any heavy loads with it, so yeah, not necessary. Okay, well, um, let's get this transmission moved to some place where I can start cleaning it up, because if I'm going to sell it, I'm not going to leave it filthy, because I'm that kind of guy, yeah. All right. All right, now to attack that spring plate. we got to get that sucker out of there. I'll bet those are either 15s or 14s. What was that? That was a 14. Uh oh oh no Ugh, stripping the heads right off of the bolts <laughs> that's not good all right little heat persuasion gonna have to soften them up somehow I don't think well you know actually I could get some penetrating lube in the backsides I forgot they they are backsided in fact you know what I'm feeling is here somebody put in some self tapping bolts I can feel the split in the bolt. This is wrong. Uh, somebody monkeyed with it at some point and messed it up. All right. Well, we need to undo what they've messed up. All right, got to looking more closely, and it turns out these bolts are actually 5 eighths. They're not metric at all. That were uh, self-tapping to redo whatever work it was that they screwed up. The 15 was just spinning around on there. Damn, this wrench sucks. This thing is uh, going to be used one last time today and then never again. Okay. Ah. Can wrench. Yeah, it's got the uh, wrong kind of washers under there and too many. And again, self tapping and the wrong thread so this has definitely been monkeyed with three for three self tappers and the last one this one the 15 millimeter tool actually fits on a whole lot better Nope. Also a self-tapper. Yep. Not right to be on here. Okay. This plate should come off. There it is. This rubber bushing should also come off. Boop. Take these and put them away. Now this whole spring plate needs to be unloaded and removed. Wow, I can almost do it by hand. It needs just a little bit more force than what I'm capable of uh, putting into it from this angle. But it needs to be lifted over the bottom stop. I swear that I'm hearing a Type 4 engine out in front of my house. Ha! I was right. I thought I heard you pulling up. Here's Wild Bill! Check it out. Be here. I'm tired as hell, but I'm glad to be here. Yeah, well. Had a weekend of partying and car shows in Nashville. Gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, them Louisiana people. Louisiana people. They oh, they know how to party. And I was drinking the rum. Red rum. Red rum? And <laughs> Red rum. And Red rum. And <laughs> fireball. Fireball. Yeah. Well, that's whiskey. <laughs> well, let me show you what we're working on. Oh, okay, cool. We got spring plates we're trying to pull off here in Gregory. Oh, All right. Well, it's not spring yet. It's almost fall. I mean, <laughs> fall plates. Yeah. Hi, right, Wild Bill. I see you came by and visited the bus. What'd you think? 
Uh, I'm impressed that you've got a hammer still embedded into the side of the bus where you were really mad like Thor and yeah. just destroyed it. That's it. I think you're going to, if it gets <laughs> soaked overnight, and like you said, you run into a little bit of a glitch, you stop, take a break, take a shower, go eat, and then the next day you come back and it falls right off. You know what else works for me sometimes? It's just taking a break from my problems by taking a huge dump. That will do it unless you clog up your toilet and then you got other problems. You know, I'm gonna stop by every once in a while, I'll give you a heads up and just just to see what the heck y'all doing. See, the advantage of coming over here, audience, is I get a chance to see things that he hasn't discussed that he's gonna be doing in the future. Oh, you but want all of the, the spoiler stuff, yeah. All the spoiler stuff. I'm a military man, I can keep secrets. Yeah, I like the spoiler stuff we could see in the corner of the screen right here now that we haven't talked about yet. <laughs> okay. I might have to blot it out, but we just gave everybody a teaser. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, the spoiler. I got you, yeah. Well, we don't want to spoil these. That's it. Things. The spoilers are spoiled. All right, well, I'm headed back to the house. You have fun. I'll catch up with you later. Birthday party tonight. Sounds good to me. At where is it going to be? Titty Peaks. Oh my god. Well, yeah, we'll do that. Gotta have beer. I get a free meal. Mm. Ah. Free is good. Free is cheap. Hi. Hi, right, Bill. I'll see you. Take care. You take care. See you later. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm taking a break from this. So let's see if we can turn on to something else that I know I can do. I think I'm just gonna about wrap it up for today. Windows was just bonus video. <laughs> I'm still fighting with the spring plate down below. I, I don't know, I heat cycled it several times. I didn't show it on video, but I heated it up for about 10, 15 minutes. The rubber bushing on the back side of it, I mean, it was smoking and burned pretty good on the back side, so it's gonna have to be replaced anyway, which doesn't surprise me. What I decided to do is I started to drill into the torsion bar, which you guys have seen me do before, so that way I can attach a slide hammer to it and attempt to pull it out that way. That's it. Let's start drilling. Here's your torsion bar. Because nothing else seems to be working. But if I get the entire torsion bar out from the inside, then I can separate it from the spring plate on the workbench a whole lot easier. So anyways, that's where we're at. Uh, <laughs> we'll see what I can do. I've already got the hole drilled and I started to tap it and then I broke off the tap after about the first turn and a half. So I should be able to get the tap out without too much of a fight. But it's just <laughs> the story of my life. You know, you're, you're almost there and you break off a tap. It was a cheap one anyway. Just cheap Harbor Freight tap garbage. Anyways, licky likey, comment, subscribe, plug that dingle belly. That way you get updates every time I upload a new video. And uh, check out duckshit.net for all my different social media links as well as my merchandise. That's right, you two can own a Duckman Cycles and VW Garage t-shirt. Of course, the jet's got to be flying over as I'm wrapping up this video. Oh, and on the subject of the windows, um, I ran out of them. I had four. I figured I'd put two in the doors and I put two on the other side. But because people have been saying such weird things about, you know, hey, you converted a panel bus, you know, you lost all of its value, I decided I'm going to leave one side of it a panel, and I'm going to put all the windows on the other side. So that way, when you look at one side, you think it's a panel, right? Right? So it should retain at least half of its value. At least that's my theory. <laughs> Thanks for watching, you guys. We'll see you next time. Alright, ended that YouTube video a little early because guess why? It's my birthday and we went out for dinner. It's over with. <laughs>
Check out my gift. Look what I got. A 13 millimeter socket and a 10 millimeter socket. Doesn't get any better than that. And I thought it was a new set of sneakers because it said Converse on it. <laughs> but you know, you can't fit size 15s in there, no. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. I really appreciate it. It's been a great birthday for me. Licky, likey, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly. See you next time.